What's up guys, welcome to The Chess Giant. This is clearly not Solomon Rudell. This is Ian Rowan. I work with Solomon to design the channel and edit the videos. We've been doing this almost a year now and we've prepared something out of the ordinary to mark our 100th video today. I'm gonna to interview Solomon with 100 rapid questions. Are you ready? Yeah. Excellent. So I know the answers to most of these. I wrote a lot of these, but I'm gonna be a good host and act like I don't know the answers and ask you things like, how tall are you? I'm 7'1". Wow. Do you play basketball? I, I do, yeah. What shoe size are you? 17. So what's the weather like up there? It's, it's nice. It's about the same as a foot down, to be honest. <laughs> How many times in your life would you estimate you've been asked some combination of those four questions? At least a dozen times a day. So y'all know what to ask him in the comments. But on a serious note, you've played basketball a lot throughout your life. Can you track the evolution of that for me? Yeah, so it started, I was seven years old, and my youth pastor taught me how to play. And from there, I played for my high school. Then I went and played down for a club team in LA. I then went to a boarding school in Philadelphia. And then after that, I played for UCI for two years, at college basketball, and now I'm at Biola. So you mentioned Biola, that's a Christian university. Are you a Christian? Yes. What's your major? Uh, right now I'm uh, biblical and theological studies with an emphasis in Christian ministries. What do you want to be when you grow up? I mean, you've already grown very far right. up. I mean, I mean the other kind. Right. Um, not quite sure yet. I do know that I want to be involved in the chess scene and I also want to be involved in ministry. What does a typical day look like for you? Well, really it depends what time of the year it is. Most of my year revolves around basketball and, and the basketball schedule. So during the basketball season, we'll usually get up around five or six in the morning. We'll work out. Then I have class from about eight to 12, maybe two o'clock. And then we have a four hour practice after that. And following that four hour practice, I have more homework. And usually I try to stuff a chess video or two in there. So where are you from and where else have you lived? So I am from Los Osos, California, a small little beach town in the central coast of, of California, a huge state, but um, that's where I'm from and that's where I've spent most of my life. However, I did spend three years by myself out in Pottstown, Pennsylvania at a boarding school called The Hill. That's a good distance for not that many years. Remind us how old you are. Right now I am 21 and when I went, I was 16. So from 16 to 18, I lived by myself at that boarding school. So do you have any siblings? I do. I have three younger, Isaac, Joseph, and Hero, all boys. So my poor mom having <laughs> to deal with four of us. But yeah. So are you close with your family? I am. Yeah, we're, we're close. Uh, always have been. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. Would you describe yourself as an introvert or an extrovert? I would probably say somewhere in the middle. Probably more towards being introverted. I am... Um, I know how to talk and I'm not, I'm not scared of people or situations, but I do tend to retreat back into my individual cave and, you know, not want to go dance and go do crazy stuff like that. So I'd, I'd probably say more introverted. So do you have a girlfriend? I, I don't. All right. We'll be taking applications in the comments. Tall women are preferred and proof of an ELO rating north of 2000 will be required. Wow. I'm kidding. What do you do for fun? Any other hobbies we haven't heard about yet? For fun? Besides that, I would probably say hiking. I like hiking. I like surfing. Basically anything to stay active. Nice. Pick one. Chess or checkers? That's a stupid question. Chess all the way. Checkers. For y'all listening to this, checkers is... Don't play checkers. It's a stupid question. You wrote that question. Pick one. Basketball or chess? <sighs> hmm. I'm going to go with chess. That's, that's my favorite. Who do you most look up to? Well, to be honest, I don't really look up to anyone, uh, pun intended. Um, I did meet one guy that was 7'8". Um, but besides that, uh, people I actually look up to, um, I would probably say my pastor, uh, Randy Nash. Um, really godly guy, really selfless guy. So I respect that guy a lot. Who taught you originally to play chess? Uh, my dad. So my dad and I were just hanging out and we were sitting there and, you know, he had a chess set and he asked me if I wanted to learn how to play. And honestly, I remember the day he taught me, I, from that very day on, I, I became pretty hooked. 
And what's your preferred style of play? I would say aggressive slash dynamic. I like positions that are not easy to solve, not easy to understand. I really do enjoy positions that require a lot of opening theory, a lot of thought, and really require the player to try and become one with the position, meaning that you really need to understand the intricacies of everything going on. Why is it so windy today? That's not one of the questions. <laughs> What's your favorite chess opening for white? For white, I'd probably say the Gilco Piano. I also like the English opening to mix things up, get out of the opening book. And what about for black? For black, I'd probably have to go against d4 with the Benko Gambit and against e4 definitely with the Sicilian Nidorf. Who's your favorite chess player? Not necessarily the greatest of all time, but your personal favorite. Mm. I'd probably have to go with Mikhail Tall. Mikhail Tall was, to say the least, any, any chess player that has ever watched his games before, I would probably say that he's the most aggressive player that we've ever seen, especially at the, the high level that he played. What's your favorite chess piece? Chess piece. I'd probably go with the knight. It, uh, knights are really good in closed, complex positions, whereas in open positions, the bishops are a lot better. But in the early stages of the games, oftentimes you'll find that the knights are better. So I'd, I'd probably go with the knights. What's your favorite chess book? Chess book? I'd probably have to go with winning chess strategies for kids. Obviously, it's a kid's book, but I read that probably three to four times growing up and that really really taught me a lot it really covers the whole basis of the game what's your favorite book in general the bible what's your favorite film film gosh i'd probably have to go with braveheart what about your favorite chess film chess film queen of cotway uh a disney produced movie came out a couple years ago that really uh has a good message. I obviously love chess, but it, it has a bigger message than just chess, so I'd probably go with that one. What about your favorite Pixar film? Cars. The first Cars, for sure. What kind of movies in general do you most enjoy watching? I like Marvel. Marvel movies are probably my favorite overall. I also like uh, Pixar films, kids' movies. A lot of stuff by Disney I like, and then I also like a lot of individual films, like the Tarantino films and Stuff like that. Who's your favorite actor? Probably pro would probably have to go with Samuel Jackson. Uh, really good actor. I mean, he has so many movies that he plays a, a really good role in. And what film made you realize that Jackson is your favorite actor? Hmm. Probably Pulp Fiction. He performed really well in that movie. So you kind of answered this already, but Marvel or DC? Definitely Marvel. DC... DC has pulled its slack up a little bit in the past couple of years, but overall Marvel is a lot more dependable and creates a higher level of movies. So who's your favorite Marvel character? Captain America. If you could have any one superpower, what would you pick? Probably the ability to fly. Could Thanos beat you in a game of chess? Depends if he had the gauntlet or not. If he did, he'd wipe half my pieces off the board, and then he'd win. Uh, if he didn't have the gauntlet, I would definitely beat him. Could Magnus Carlsen beat you in a game of chess if he started one piece down of your choice? Now, that's tough. At first, I thought you were just going to ask if he'd beat me, and the answer is yes. Um, with we, a piece we, we, down... We know that. With a piece down... Yeah. With a piece down, I'd probably... I think I'd win. At least a draw. Um... I think it's really hard in the beginning stages of the game to, to mess up a full piece advantage. Could you play a game of chess blindfolded? Yes. Uh, in my prime about five years ago when I was really trying to get a hold of the blindfolded chess thing, I could do two at once. Um, right now I could probably just do one. Could a computer beat you in a game of chess? Really depends on the level of the computer. Um, obviously there's many apps, you know, chess.com apps and stuff like that where they set the computer at a certain level and in that case yes but in terms of people trying to create the highest level of computer they can no chance zero percent chance even gary kasparov back in 1997 despite all the controversy he did lose to a computer 
And if Kasparov can lose to a computer in 1997, I can definitely lose to one <laughs> to one now. So you just, you just hit on the next question. You've touched on this very objectively before, but in yeah. your opinion of that 1997 match between Kasparov and supercomputer Deep Blue, do you think IBM cheated? I don't know if I am super strong on this stance. I would personally say that I think they cheated. I just know there was more going on. Really, the red, the red flags for me were when IBM decided to shut the computer down and never let it be seen again. On top of that, during the match, they were controlling the media and trying to make it sound like everything was well. So I, I would definitely say that something was going on. What that exactly was, I'm not sure, but there was definitely something going on. Do you enjoy any other board games besides chess? I would probably go with Monopoly. I like Monopoly a lot. It's a long game. You have to think a lot, invest, etc., etc., create connections. The other game I like, which this is, this is a little embarrassing. Okay, so y'all out there listening, don't judge me. Candyland, okay? I don't know why I like it so much. I guess that there's literally no thought into it. I mean, if you think about it, the second that it starts, someone has already won the game, but I do like that game. So it's a nice respite. Yeah, from, yeah, from chess. nice balance. What sport or other game do you know you'd be absolutely terrible at? Probably being a horse jockey. I'm so tall, my feet would probably drag on the drag on the ground and I'd probably just pick the horse up and start running by myself. So that would probably be the main sport that I would absolutely be terrible at. What's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done? Well, the most embarrassing thing I've ever done and I'm probably going to do it again. I do it just about every year is hitting my head on doors especially in airports. In airports and on airplanes, people are always asking me how tall are you? Do you hit your head on doors? And one time a lady asked me, do you hit your head on doors? And right when she asked that, I hit my head. So probably one of those. And, you know, people are always staring and it's just, it's kind of awkward. On a different note, what one thing have you done that you're the most proud of? I would probably go with just helping people. I try not to get too caught up in personal accomplishments, but, but I do enjoy helping people, so that would probably be the main thing. Imagine, you're going to war with only three other people. Who do you bring? Whew, okay. A lot of options. Pick me. Well, Ian, yeah, I'm going to pick you. I'm going to pick you at number one, because yeah. you're smart and you have a brain, okay? Oh, that's good. You, you're smarter than me, okay? For y'all listening, Ian's smarter than me, except yeah, yeah. for chess. Oh. Um, yeah, so probably Ian, because he really can think and be intelligent. The second person would probably be my dad. My dad is strong and very passionate. So I'd probably go with my dad. He would. He really knows how to fight as well. He knows how to handle guns and stuff like that. So I'd probably go with my dad. And thirdly, am I allowed to pick like a, a fictional character or just people? I, I didn't put any conditions on this. You, you wrote this question. You pick. Okay. I'm going to go with Captain America. Um, obviously, that's a, you know out of the ballpark pick, but I like Captain America, so I feel like if he was on my team, I'd probably not die. Good answers. I like the part where I was in there. Yeah. A mysterious benefactor drops 100 million into your bank account. What are the first three things you do with it? Whoa. 100 million. 100 million. Okay. I would probably, first off, I take care of my family. Um, second off, I would take care of myself. And when I say take care of, I don't mean build, you know, buy million dollar mansions or anything like that. Buy a nice house, buy, buy a car or two. And after that, I take care of my family, I take care of myself. And following that, I would probably do my best to, to help people in the community and donate to good causes. All right, we're getting, we're getting a little silly. I wanna switch gears to something very serious. Okay. Is a hot dog a sandwich? It's not. You know, I, I know a lot of people disagree with me. I'm actually pretty hard set on this one. If a hot dog was a sandwich, we wouldn't call it a hot dog. So therefore, it's not a sandwich. Talk to me in the comment section. So what's your favorite food? Favorite food? Would have to go with fish. Favorite candy? Mm, Skittles. 
What would you not eat if it was your last source of food while stranded on a desert island? What would I not eat? Yeah. What do you hate the most? Ketchup. If there was ketchup, I'm not eating that. I don't think most people would eat just straight ketchup on, on, its, on its own. That's, that's fair. It's still a good answer. As an athlete, what's your strategy for watching what you eat? Just have to be disciplined, set a, set a goal, set a plan. Usually what I do is I don't just say, okay, from now on, I'm not going to eat candy, but I set a goal like, okay, until this date, which is one month, two months, six months from now, I'm not going to eat this or that. That would probably be my answer. What does your workout routine look like? It really depends on the time of the year. I'd say when it's least intense in the off season, I really just try to stay in decent shape stay active, hike, surf, etc., etc. During the season itself, our workout routine, as I've mentioned before, is pretty crazy with four-hour workouts and lifts and full-on mountain sprints at four in the morning. So it obviously varies during the time of year. Any more advice for people trying to lose weight and get in better shape? I would probably say to do it around people that can support you, encourage you, people that you can do it with. Losing weight, eating better, really doing anything of discipline is hard. So having the right people around you is a huge, huge factor. Have you had to travel a lot for basketball? And what's the longest trip in terms of time investment that you've been on for that? Yeah, I've, I've had to travel a lot from 10-hour trips every weekend for a couple of years on the train to flying over the country. Probably the longest experience I had was 30 hours it was supposed to be seven, and I was only flying from capital D.C. to California. Problem was that on the way, we had two stops, and both of those stops, I had seven-hour delays on each stop. And I was supposed to go into Fresno, but we flew into L.A., and then I had a five-hour drive after that. So once it was all said and done, I had about 30 hours. Where is the farthest you've traveled from home? South Korea. Which is the best U.S. state? California, for sure. Good answer. Yeah. If you could travel anywhere for one week, no obligations, no basketball, no chess, you're just hanging out there, Right. where would you go? Israel. Well, that's probably not happening anytime soon, as yeah. is going anywhere else. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the current worldwide pandemic? I think it's an issue, and uh, honestly, on a serious note, my heart goes out to to all those affected, I think that um, we really have two battles. The first battle is is not being fearful. I think a lot of people are really scared and fearful beyond measure. And I do think that some fear is good, um, but I but I also think that the media kind of feeds off of too much fear. So that's the first battle. And the second battle is just being wise. You know, one thing is to not be scared. Another spectrum, another way of looking at it that is totally not right is just assuming that it's not real, assuming it's a hoax. And it is real, you know, there's a lot of people listening to this right now and pretty much everyone on earth has an opinion on it, but at the end of the day, it is real and we do need to be wise and try to protect people that are vulnerable to the virus. What were your thoughts on FIDE continuing to hold this year's candidates tournament despite the pandemic? I, I thought it was silly. Chess is supposed to quote unquote, be the thinking man's game and the fact that literally the whole earth has shut down, but we decide that we have to have two people play against one another with, you know, don't get me wrong guys, I love chess, but at the end of the day, we are moving plastic objects across a board, so I really do not think that it's worth risking lives. So are you a fan overall of FIDE? I'm not. I Honestly, since FIDE's uh, beginnings, They've always had an issue with authority. The most recent example literally being still playing chess while the entire world was shut down. And on top of that, just not giving the players a voice. Are you a fan of Bobby Fischer? You've talked on this before, but touch on it again. Yeah, I'm honestly not a fan of Bobby Fischer. I think Bobby Fischer was a great player, really good player, um, some great attacking games really contributed to the game of chess, but in terms of being a fan of him, I'm not. He was racist, sexist, 
wished for terrorist attacks upon the United States. And he wasn't just kind of racist or kind of sexist. He was overtly racist and sexist. And I really just don't see how I can be a fan of him personally. So a lot of people would say Fisher, but that's clearly not your answer. Who do you think is the greatest chess player of all time? I go back and forth on this one. Overall, I'd probably say it's really close between Magnus Carlsen and Garry Kasparov. Right now, Magnus Carlsen is playing at such a high level that it's really easy for me to put him at the best of all time. However, he does need some more time to develop and dominate. I mean, Kasparov really ruled the chess world for two entire decades. So as of now, I'd probably put them neck and neck. Do you think Magnus will lose the World Chess Champion title anytime soon? I don't. He he plays at such a high level, and he, he's so poised, especially in pressure situations. I mean, really, the last couple matches he had against Karjakin and against uh, Fabiano Caruana, both of those matches, he didn't dominate in the standard rounds, but he really dominated in the rapid segment. So Carlson, with his intelligence and knowledge of the game, along with his poise, I just... I just don't see how he's going to lose it anytime soon. Where do you think chess is headed in terms of growth? Is it expanding or tapering off? I don't really think it's going anywhere. I don't, I don't think it's growing a ton. I also don't think it's dying off. I think chess is one of those games that even as it might not you know, ever become viral or have everyone on earth playing it, I don't think it will ever die either. Obviously, back in the 60s, chess reached its peak during the Fischer versus Spassky game although really the only reason that was such a big deal is because of the cold war so i would probably say that chess isn't growing or dying but isn't really going anywhere either how long does it take an average person to learn to play chess well depends on age i would say just learning how to play chess for for a child it would probably take two to three hours and for an adult it would probably probably take around 30 to 40 minutes and in terms of playing it well it really just depends on what a person means by well. If we're speaking club level, which is kind of how I defined it, I would probably say after a few months of studying an hour or so or an hour or so a day, uh, any player can be pretty good. What advice would you give to anyone to improve as quickly as possible? Tactics. Tactics are huge. A lot of people love to study openings and opening theory and really get into those first 10 moves, but Honestly, tactics is 99% of chess, if not 100. So tactics for sure. If you study tactics, there's literally no chance you won't improve. What's the longest game of chess you've ever played? Seven hours, and I've had dozens of those. In tournament format, I used to play a ton of tournament chess, and I had dozens upon dozens of games where the game could have lasted seven hours, and both my opponent and I used that entire time So yeah, I'd go with seven. Who's the highest rated player you've ever beaten in tournament format? Uh, One time I beat an international master rated around 2,400. There have been more and more women playing chess in recent years. How do you feel about that? Huge fan, huge fan of women playing chess. I know a lot of people, you know, say that women shouldn't play chess or that it's a man's game. I mean, that's honestly one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. Women are just as capable as men, and honestly, there have been a lot of women that have really emerged and challenged uh, players of all levels, including probably the best of all time, being Judith Polgar, the greatest women's player of all time, and probably top 50 player all time. In less than 30 seconds, what is your advice for kids interested in tournament chess? My main advice is just have fun. It's really easy to get pressured and by parents and stuff like that and playing well and stressing out about the game obviously try to have fun and yes do try to win in chess there is a winner and a loser and one should strive to win but winning is not everything and honestly it's all about the process so just have fun do you think you'll teach your kids chess i do i think i'll teach them how to play chess um I'll also see how much they like it, though. I just want my kids, whenever I have them someday, I don't want them to be forced into doing something Dad wants them to do or anything like that. I'm just going to teach them certain things, and whatever they love to do will be what they do. Any other advice for chess parents? For chess parents, my main piece of advice 
would be to love your kids unconditionally. Yes, that sounds super cheesy. However, I have seen, especially growing up, many parents that didn't feed their kids after a loss, that yelled at their kids after a loss, and that's just really not a healthy family dynamic. You should care about your kid before you care about your kid winning a game while they move material plastic objects over a table. Do you think chess is good for you, mentally or otherwise, or is it mainly just fun? I think chess is very good for you, especially for adolescents developing their brains. Chess is one of those games that forces you to think. It's not like any other game that really depends on physical merit or anything like that. You are forcing yourself to use your mind. And growing up, I really struggled with math, and it wasn't until I played chess that I really started to understand mathematical patterns. How does nutrition affect chess, if at all? It affects chess a ton, and this is on, I'm happy you asked that. This is honestly one of the the least emphasized subjects in the world of chess. In fact, I've, I've heard many people say that exercise is not good for a chess player, and that is just one of the silliest things I've ever heard. Exercise is good for your brain, and having a healthy brain is good for your chest. Therefore, being physically active is totally beneficial for your chest. Do you want to try and play chess professionally, and how far do you think you would push that? I don't think I'll try to play professionally. It's a lot of work, and honestly, it's a ton of time. I mean, when you commit even to one tournament, it's a two- or three-day experience. You can't really do anything else but play chess there all day. And besides the top 10 players in the world, it's very hard for players to make a true living off the game besides coaching and stuff like that. So I probably won't play professionally. I would like to play for fun sometimes, and I'd love to make a push for FIDE Master. What's the biggest stereotype surrounding chess that you think simply is not true? Probably that you have to be quote-unquote smart to play chess. People, when they find out that I play chess, just think I'm super, super smart. And that's honestly not why. And that's not why I have a chess channel or why I reached the level of chess that I did. It was because I worked at it. And really anyone, and I'm not joking, you do not have to be a genius to play chess. You just have to learn the game and be disciplined just like anything else. What besides chess do you want to do with your life? Besides chess, in terms of profession... I would love to be involved in ministry, and I'd I love to be involved with just helping people. And on top of that, I, I do have a lot of entrepreneurial ideas, and we'll see how those go. But chess is definitely a, a key part of that. What made you want to start a YouTube channel? Honestly, I just love the game of chess, and I saw a lot of other YouTubers doing chess, and I just thought it would be fun to, to create content about chess and provide some some free lessons in terms of openings and game analysis and stuff like that to the community. So that's why I started and I've had a ton of fun doing it. Would you ever consider starting more YouTube channels? I would. I definitely would. Um, there's a lot of different ideas that I have. As of now, we're going really hard after the chess thing, but eventually I'd love to expand on that. Would you ever run for president? Don't think I could. Being president is a very noble and very difficult task. However, I just, I don't think I'm built for it. Different take on that. Who is your favorite president? That's tough. I'd probably have to go with Abraham Lincoln just because of the ground that he helped the United States make in terms of unifying and also in terms of abolishing slavery. So let's develop that further. What are your thoughts on the Black Lives Matter movement? Yeah, so I'm, you know, as you asked earlier, I'm Christian and I'm, I'm, I tend to be more conservative. And I find a lot of my fellow conservative, conservative friends really going after the, the Black Lives move, Matter movement. And I just think that's one of the silliest things. I mean, obviously, we know that there's anarchists and there's, there's people destroying towns and burning up targets and stuff like that. But... The Black Lives Matter movement, I totally support. Obviously, all lives matter. And whenever a lot of people hear Black Lives Matter, they think, oh, like, no, but all lives matter. Obviously, anyone in their right mind thinks that all lives matter. However, a lot of black people aren't treated right. 
from the beginning of this country in the United States to today, yes, we've made progress, but it's still a huge issue, and I totally support the movement. Who's your favorite musician or, or band? I'd probably have to go with Lecrae, a hip-hop Christian artist. Uh, really has made music that has helped me grow in my, my thought, my development, and how I see the world, so I'd definitely go with him. And what's your favorite album by Lecrae? Church Closed 3. In Church Closed 3, he talks about the Black Lives Matter movement, and he talks about racial tensions in the United States particularly, and how we as Christians can help gap help bridge the gap between both sides. Who's your favorite graphics designer and semi-competent co-host? I'd have to go with you, Ian. Oh, good. Yeah. That was the correct answer. Okay. If you could hang out with any celebrity besides me for one day, who would it be? Mm. I'd probably have to go back to Lecrae. It'd be really cool to, to hang out a day with that guy and get to, get to know how he thinks. Who's your favorite athlete? As of now, are we talking all time or just? Let's talk all time. All time. Mm. I'd probably have to go with, and this is current too, but probably LeBron James. Who was the, if it's different, who was the greatest basketball player of all time? I think that's a, a tie, and this is definitely controversial for most people. Most people would just say Michael Jordan, but. I would say a tie between Michael Jordan and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I think Kareem gets knocked off too quickly. He did win six NBA championships as well as three college championships. So it's really hard to, to not put him right at the top. So you're, you're wearing a Lakers jersey right now. Yes. Is that your favorite NBA team? Yes. There has been a lot of talk recently about college athletes and how their careers affect their mental health. Do you agree that this is an issue? I totally, totally, totally agree this is an issue. I personally have have dealt with it. Um, there's obviously, you know, a lot of people when they see basketball, for example, because that's what I play, when they see basketball games, they see the lights, the cameras, the scholarships, the money, all this stuff. But at the end of the day, student athletes really do deal with a lot of stress and People talk about how college is stressful, but student athletes don't get a free pass on college, at least most of the time if they're doing it legally. You have full on academic work. And then on top of that, you have to perform in front of thousands of people on a weekly basis, sometimes nightly basis. So it adds a lot of stress. And on top of that, there's many other people that should be held accountable for making that stress worse. Looks like you led directly into our next question. Who should be held accountable? for the mental health issues that college athletes face? I think that the finger really needs to be pointed at coaches. Coaches have a huge role to play in the stress level and mental health of student athletes. And on top of that, the universities. The universities, I know they're bringing in millions upon millions of dollars, especially with basketball and football, but they do need to keep the coaches accountable for how they treat the students. My old coach at UC Irvine treated me terribly and my mental health definitely suffered from that. And what other specific strategies do you feel need to be used to support athletes in their mental health? I think from a overall perspective, especially from the public and from families as well, we need to see these athletes as people. And it's really easy to see athletes as just athletes. I mean. They, they are athletes, they do perform at a very high level and give us very entertaining sports to watch. But at the end of the day, they're people. They go to bed just like us. They put their shoes on one at a time just like us. I mean, they're people, they deal with stress, they deal with anxiety. And families included, we need to look out for the person before the athlete. For example, if the athlete is stressed out and is having a mental breakdown, one shouldn't force the athlete to go play the game, but make sure that the athlete is mentally okay. Do you think that social media is having a net positive impact on our world today? I think there's two sides, and it's doing a lot of good, and it's also doing a lot of bad. I think it's connecting our world, and in some ways, that's really good. I mean, for example, with the Black Lives Matter movement, because of social media, the Black Lives Matter movement has really taken off in a lot of ways just because of how people are able to unify and stuff of that nature. 
it really does connect people for positive good. However, the flip side, and I, I really notice this with athletes, for example, or creatives or entrepreneurs, etc., is that it creates so much pressure. So many eyes are on you. So much public scrutiny is available. And it's really easy to try to please people, try to get those likes, try to get those clicks. Where really you should just live your life and take care of yourself. So tell me, what is your greatest fear? I think my greatest fear right now is concerning this country and the direction we're going in terms of racial inequality. I really do support the Black Lives Matter movement. I do support bridging the gap between both sides. And honestly, I just worry that we're going to see the same thing over and over again. How George Floyd died was truly horrific. And I'd hate for us to just keep the pattern going, keep cops unaccountable. Cops need to be held with greater accountability. And just to see this pattern of cops brutalizing people and then huge riots, cops brutalizing people and huge riots, I really just want us to break that cycle. So you have mentioned earlier that you're seven foot one. What are the biggest advantages of being so tall? I would probably say basketball. Basketball is the, the number one. I mean, you can't teach height, as I say, quote unquote. So height really does help with basketball. And on top of that, it does help with physical activities and work and stuff of that nature. Flip side, what are the worst things about being so tall besides doorways? Right. Desi besides doorways, I would go with fitting into clothes. I cannot fit into jeans or shirts or shoes or planes or really anything that is support that is supported to hold people or carry people around. I mean, obviously fitting stuff is, is a nightmare. What do you want to be remembered for? That's, that's a deep one. I would probably say that I want to be remembered for my love for Jesus. And I want to be remembered for helping people before I help myself. I think it's really easy for us to, to live selfishly and live for ourselves, But at the end of the day, I just want to be known as that guy that loved Jesus, cared about people and put people before himself. And this is our final, our 100th question. Did we really go to the moon? All right, hear me out. I'm not a huge conspiracy guy, but no, I'm going to, I'm going to take the conspiracy on this one. I think that Really, the biggest thing for me is that there have been a bunch of whistleblowers that have said we didn't. And for that reason, I'm going to say no. All right. That was 100 questions. So that wraps up our interview. Check the description for some actual chess videos. Like and subscribe so the YouTube algorithm Here. doesn't eat us alive. And I'm going to cue the outro right about now. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to watch another one, you can click or tap up here. And I've got a lot more high quality chess content on the way. So if you'd like to subscribe, you can click or tap down here. I really appreciate your support.